start working on that. Stuff in the wind. I will. I still have a wind farm. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, church family. <laughs> Let us come into his presence as we begin our worship. We invite you to join in singing with Gospel Road, Shine, Jesus, Shine. So we're here to praise and worship Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask to feel your presence. Please fill our hearts and minds with your spirit as we praise you this morning. How are you all today? Are you warm? Awesome. Are you warm with God's presence? There we go. And good morning, everyone, virtually. We're glad you're joining us also. Today is, a Lord, is the Lord's Day, and what a wonderful day for us all to be together. Um, please join in with the singing. Please join in with the fellowship. Greet each other. Wave to each other. And just feel the blessing of being together. 
Welcome and good morning, friends, family, guests. Welcome both here in this building and on Facebook and YouTube later. Welcome to worship. We give thanks for this community in all ways, shapes, and forms. And today we explore the concept of unity through the concept of synergy, where one plus one actually equals three. That is a summary of God and how when we are in God, magic happens. This synergy of creating more than ever alone, where expectations dissolve into wonder and amazement, and the only way to view life, even in the middle of violence, inequity, injustice, isms, abuse, trauma, unfairness, struggle, challenge, illness, grief and loss, even in this world, the power of God, the power of Jesus has importance to each of us in ways that create for us a path to live and live in the spirit. Where do you need God's power of synergy in your life today? As we worship, may you experience the synergy of the Holy Spirit and may you recognize your part in creating unity, but the key parts of others in creating that and achieving the beloved community in a world of violence, injustice, in equity, pain, and illness that we so desperately need. Oh, Holy Spirit, descend upon us today. Help us in our hurt, pain, discomfort, anger, and become the beloved community through your gifts you give us. Let us worship. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the resurrection and the life, and he is so worthy of our praise. <laughs> the peace of Christ. Please stay in place and turn and wave. You can send blow kisses, say heart with a heart. You can love each other, but please pass the peace and pass God's love to each other. Hi, Allie. <laughs> and
and, and peace with those that are at home. <laughs> yes, we love you at home. We know you're there, and we feel you here. We're looking forward to everyone being back in here in person. So for Life of the Church this morning, we have a new Bible study starting tomorrow. There are books available outside on the uh, information tables. Uh, Living Our Beliefs. It is in your bulletins. Um, and there is a sign-up sheet on the Narthex tables, but, you know, same as last time. You're all signed up. So it doesn't matter if you sign up and write down your name. You're all signed up, so you're all welcome to come. So, more yes, you're more than welcome to just show up. The Zoom links are on there. If you would like to join by Zoom, that would be awesome. And like I said, you're already all signed up. Super Bowl Sunday is coming up, and if you look in your bulletin, it's a little misspelled because we spelled it S-O-U-P-E-R. So we're going to collect soup and soup and crackers for Lehman's Food Pantry. So please join in with that. We have um, our, our, can't think of the name of it, our bin or whatever outside in the narthex there. Please bring in soup because there are people that are in need of some help with food. Uh, we're going through strange times right now, to say the least. Uh, so soup, crackers, start bringing them in next week, any week, every week. We'd love to have more soup. And I think that is it. There is, if you look in the bulletin also, there's a thing at free at-home COVID tests. Uh, and so just for you on and virtually, if you don't have this, it's sign up to have them mailed to your home. And it's covidtest.gov. Okay, so yeah, so we're trying to get that. We're trying to get that out there because we care about y'all. And I. Oh, go on our Facebook. It's on our Facebook. The bulletin. Yeah, the bulletins are on our Facebook, but yes, COVIDtest.gov. Um, and I think that is it. We have a financial announcement also from Bob. Yes. Thank Hello. you, Bob. Morning, everyone. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Bob Monick. Um, my family, we typically go to the second service. Uh, I sit as the secretary on the finance committee. Uh, if, you, if you look in your um, bulletin, there is an insert uh, regarding the finances from 2021. Finance met this past Monday. We kind of wrapped up 2021. And um, we put the numbers together for you to see, but I wanted to come up and speak just to add a little color to the numbers that you're seeing on the page. Uh, last year was a year for finance that when we were scheduling and budgeting for the year, we had no idea what the year was going to hold for us. Um, we knew, had no idea what was going to happen in the church. We were changing pastors. We had the world outside. Everything was going crazy. Um, and so we set a budget for ourselves of $240,000 from giving from the congregation. And if you look at the bottom, we actually budgeted to take a loss last year. Um, and we were anticipating to just lose a little bit of our income in the bank, bank statements because we weren't sure about what was going to happen. Um, if you rem I was up here probably at the beginning of October, I believe at the beginning of last quarter, um, to give an update on finance. And when we were in the middle of the year, we were actually about $13,000 behind pace for budget for the year, which obviously was a concern for us. And we started to make up a little bit of ground, a little bit of ground, and as we came into October, we were $8,000 behind budget to hit the $240,000. Well, to share the good news, as we came through the holiday season and we came through Q4, we not only hit our budget of $240,000, we exceeded that by $6,000 and came over budget for last year. So that was great. In addition to that, with us coming over budget and then also saving a little bit of money here and there on some of the expenses, we actually had a surplus last year of $7,600. So that was a, a $13,000 spread of what we were anticipating versus what we have in the bank account. So, um, so it was really good news. Wanted to come up and share it with everybody. Um, and we're looking forward to a really strong year coming up. Good. Thank you so much. Um, this is this church is phenomenal to do a thirteen thousand dollar deficit um and overcome it in six months is just amazing um 
And so finance has worked hard. Every committee in this church has worked hard. Everyone here has worked hard. Those that are with us virtually has worked hard. And so um, we are excited for what this new year will bring. Um, the work is not done yet. We still have a lot more to do. But in the recognition, let us recognize um, everyone, but specifically the finance committee for the work they've done and for this church to get us out of that deficit in the middle of COVID still and have a little bit of surplus. So let's give everyone a round of applause. That's the recognition is for our financial success. So thank you all. Let us now go to joys and concerns. What are some joys you bring with you? My younger daughter, Alexis, turned 21 yesterday. So very proud. She's a junior at the University of Scranton and her major is occupational therapy and she's doing great. So we're very excited for her. Awesome. Excellent. Other joys that are in the house here? Okay. I had a wonderful cruise last week. And we're, we missed you all, but we're glad to be back. <laughs> in this cold weather. <laughs> yes, you came back right in the cold. Excellent. Other, cons uh, other joys? I have a joy that will lead into a concern, <laughs> if we're there. Yeah. Um, I have a joy and a concern. I had a test done on Friday to figure out what was going wrong, and the good news is there was nothing. Oh. And the bad news is there was nothing. Yeah. So there's more tests and everything in my future. If you could um, keep prayers for that. And I also would like prayers for um, my boss's father. Um, he's not doing well and going through a lot of trial treatments so that others won't go through this. If we could keep his family in strength. Excellent. Thank you for that. And we'll pray for you. All right, let's go to concerns. Where are we at? We do have one on Facebook from Mandy, uh, playing for the, praying for the family of a very close friend, Bill, who passed away suddenly last Sunday. So we'll pray for um, Bill and his family. Go ahead, Don. Um, I have a concern. My sister and brother-in-law have COVID. Their granddaughter, who's pregnant, has COVID, who lives with them. Wow. So we kind of know where the COVID came from. But um, please pray, because my sister has um other health issues yeah. yeah and i mean pastor betty said joanne and her family struggling with um covid well no just struggling with illnesses but because oh. the covid numbers are high they're gonna stay home just for illnesses bit, yeah so. so we have people that come here um faithfully they're all sick carol and her family's got covid um i talked to just about everyone on our um at home list or people who um have some pretty major illnesses. Um, some are doing okay. Some still need a lot of prayer. Rosemary Hoffman is definitely somebody who needs some prayer. Um, she is struggling with trying to recover. Um, and I, there's been other, I can't think of all the conversations I had this week, but just prayers for anybody who's on our um, homebound list. Yeah, I, th I think of Bob Bull. I know our granddaughter has COVID right now. She's five. Um, our daughter-in-law has COVID, but they're fine. She's five, and she's running around, and she's making all these kind of crafts and artwork and drawings. She's, she's home from school and sleeping in and enjoying it. Yeah. Any other concerns? Oh, go ahead. You want to go? I put my mom on hospice on Friday night, oh, I'm so, so sorry. I'm sorry. That's why I had to answer the phone call. But. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wh where is she? Is she locally? This actually will make sure that she just stays in her own home where my dad and her want to be. Okay. So it's actually a good thing. Okay. But where do they live? I'm sorry, in Huntington Valley. Just okay, so like they are local. Yeah, they're okay. 10 minutes from us and 10 minutes from my sister. Okay, so. okay, okay. Any other concerns? And I don't see anything else on Facebook. But if you have anything on Facebook, just put it out there and we will pray for you. Um, all right, why don't we just go to prayer, and at the end of the prayer, we will share the Lord's Prayer together. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, we are here in your presence, both in this building and on virtual means. So, oh God, in this moment in which we take to talk to you, we know that we are going to experience who you are. We know we're going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. So we begin this time with the praises and the thanks that occur in our lives. Those that were spoken and those that are unspoken. 
for you know what's on our hearts. And in these moments of thanks and praise, we recognize blessings abound around us. So we give you thanks for family, for relationships, for those things in our lives that make us smile, that make our hearts jump with joy. We give you thanks and praise. But oh God, we also come to you with hearts heavy for illnesses that seem to ravage our bodies, some able to be diagnosed and some not. So oh God, where healing is needed physically, heal. Heal in all ways, shapes, and forms. Let your healing hand guide all the doctors, nurses, and all the medical professionals that care for people. And let your strength and your courage carry the family members who also care. For, oh God, we know that in faith, healing occurs in all ways, shapes, and forms. But we beseech you, oh God, where there is physical healing needed, let that occur. Heal all those that need to be healed. And, oh God, in those spaces of our hearts where anger, guilt, shame, disbelief, concern, worry overtake us, where we need emotional and mental healing, oh God, heal us. Heal us in ways that let us live walking a life with you. Let us live in ways that help us to see you differently. We pray for all those that can't be with us for whatever reason, that your presence is made known to them in those areas in which they need you, oh God. We pray for those struggling with homelessness in this cold weather, those struggling with food insecurities, those struggling with addictions, abuse, trauma, those struggling with violence, that in all those areas in which it seems that life is too hard and unfair, that somehow your justice, your equality shows up, that your love is made known to them, and that somehow in those spaces they see who you are, and they know that they are loved. We pray for this church. We give you thanks for a church and a church family who has risen to the occasion to make sure that we were not going to have a debt this year. But, oh God, we also know that there is more to do for you, more to do for this church. So let your abundance flow in ways that help us to know that when we give, we get more. That when we give to you, your blessings abound all around us. So work in each person's heart, oh God, so that this abundance is how they live. We pray for where you'd have this church go, for we know when we get out of the way and let you lead, amazing things occur. So let your amazing plan unfold. Let us see you in ways that help us to know where we need to follow you. And oh God, we do all this because you, in the form of Jesus, came into this world to be with us, to teach us, to walk with us and laugh with us, but also to show us the love you have by dying for us, for knowing that no matter what we are, what we have, what we don't have, what we've done, what we haven't done, that your death, the risen, the resurrection, is the love you have for us. So let us experience that, O oh God, by sharing these same words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now that we have prayed in faith, let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we would hope that you would join with us, Gospel Road, God of all my days. Sing with all your heart and soul. At some point, we all have some weakness or doubt 
some fear or some struggle. And God is the answer for each of those. And he is our strength for all of our days.
Today's responsive reading comes from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. Our scripture today reminds us of the value of all peoples to the life of the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 31. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if an ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of a body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body was, were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he choose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with the greatest, greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with great respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If a member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has appointed to the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you still more excellent way. The word of God for the people of God. have many um, children here, but you know what? We're all going to do this because this is going to be fun. We, I, do you want to come on up? I knew there was one. I, I thought she went to the restroom because I didn't see her. Come on up. Who else wants to come up too? Come on up. What's your name? Allie. Allie? All right. Do you know who I am? You do? I don't know who I am. All right. So here's what we're going to do. And actually, everyone can help you because they, they probably need some help too. Oh, are you going to play the... Go ahead. <laughs> All right, Allie, so I'm going to show you some pictures up here, and you got to tell me what they are, okay? So what's that? It's a plate. That's very good. Okay, ready for the next one? What's that? It's a fork. All right, now here's going to be the big question. What, 
what happens when you put the plate and the fork together? What occurs? I don't know. <laughs> Take a guess. If you're really hungry, what happens when you have a plate and a fork? Do you get to eat? Yes. Yes. What's your favorite food? Mm. Is it pizza? Yes. All right. Are you ready for the next set of questions? Okay, here we go. What is that? A chicken. Yes. Ready? What is that? A pan. A pan. All right, ready for the next question? This is why I wanted to do this one anyway. All right, what happens when you put a chicken and a pan together? I don't know. You, you, don't know. you get chicken nuggets, that's right. You get to cook that chicken. Do you like chicken? Yes. Does mom make a lot of chicken? Sometimes. <laughs> you are awesome, Allie. All right. So you know what happens? Sometimes when we let God in our lives, amazing things occur that you can't do by yourself. And so if we put two things together, we get something we couldn't do if they were by themselves. That's what God's all about. You ready to pray? All right, and the way we're going to pray is I'm going to say something, you're going to say something after me, okay? Ready? All right, dear God. Dear God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For giving us. For giving us. The ability. The ability. To create new things. To create new things. With each other. Shadow. Amen. 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 All right. Nice job. Nice job. Okay, that was fun. All right. I love that song. <laughs> All right. Exploding synergy. That's what we're talking about. That was, uh, I love those pictures. All right. So, does anybody know where the ice cream cone came from? It began in 1904 when this event happened at the St. Louis World Fair and it led to the widespread love of the ice cream cone. So here's the story. There's this person by the name of Albert. He was a Lebanese ice cream worker. He was working the booth at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904 and next to him was Ernest, somebody who made waffles, but his business wasn't really doing well that day. But during the fair, Albert ran out of paper cups for his ice cream. And so all of a sudden, the one next to him, Ernest, noticed about the shortage next door. And while his waffles were still warm, he rolled them into cones and filled them with ice cream. Fairgoers loved it, and the ice cream cone quickly became a favorite among fair and street vendors. Synergy. When a result can only occur because of two or more that couldn't achieve it alone. For years, I taught on this concept. It was a way to understand work. It was a way to understand teamwork. It was a basis for personality differences. It was a way we were supposed to think about the world, that we can't do things by ourselves, we have to do things together, just like an idea service, because two people were standing next to each other. One runs out of something, the other one has something, never to consider putting the two together until that moment. I am certain each of you have had those moments in your life where all of a sudden an idea, a solution, something showed up because two things that were independent of each other were there and you noticed a new connection. I am certain you've seen that in work. I'm certain you've seen that in your lives. When I was looking up some things around this, there's a website called Like a Team, a Christian resource for leadership and teamwork development. And it says these four things about Synergy. Synergy helps us to create something we could never produce on our own. The power of Synergy is released as we partner with others. Community is a shared responsibility and releases the power of Synergy. And true kingdom synergy extends to the next generation. You see, these last two points is what we're focusing on today. And I think the author of 1 Corinthians, Paul, understood that and was writing about those last two points. That the power of synergy is released as we partner with others. And community is a shared responsibility. And it releases the power of synergy. 
We've had synergy here in this church in the last six months. We've heard it in the financial update by Bob. We have seen it in the Fall Fun Fest. We have figured out how to navigate a pandemic with worship and staying open in many ways. We've had a Christmas light show. And now, as we embark in 2022, we are thinking about outreach on a Spring Fun Fest with an Easter light show, working with those who struggle with housing and homelessness, single families, etc., we have seen the synergy in this church where hope is here with a new roof that many thought we were never going to be able to figure out how to manage. And that we have seen healing in many ways, shapes, and forms of individual members and those that are connected to our members. Synergy is here. Hope is here. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. But yet, synergy can only happen in environments, or true synergy, the synergy that Paul is talking about, can only happen in environments in which equity exists, pure equity. Divisions are no longer. Everyone is important. Opinions do not rule. Listening is the main way of life. A sense of value is felt and given to everyone, even those they don't like. And passive aggressiveness is no longer. Anger is no longer. Worry is no longer. A sense of respect rules in all ways, shapes, and forms. That's the environment of synergy that Paul is talking about. That's the environment of synergy when we are living with Christ in our lives. Is that the environment of this world, of this community, of this church? Where in your life do you see unequalness and things that are unfair? Where do you see, create, and support division by your words, actions, and thoughts? Where do you believe someone is more important and you are less than? Where are you creating a less than for someone else? Where do your opinions create it that it has to be a certain way? Where in meetings do you talk about what was and what we did and how we have to do it that way instead of talking about what is today and what we may need to do to respond to our changing world? Where do you live like this in your life? As a quick side note, Wesley was so good. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was so good at saying we need to go where people are at I think the biggest struggle of our churches today is nobody truly wants to go where people are at. If we were true Wesleyans right now, we would be outside preaching to the tent communities, not inside this building. But nobody wants to do that, it seems. Paul is challenging us that we need to go where people are at, exactly what John Wesley did. Where is the thought that two ears and one mouth means to talk more than just listen. Where do you give value to those you don't like? And where do you build up those you can't stand? Or where do you still triangulate and use anger and passive aggressiveness in how you deal with others? I don't know about you, but if I answer correctly, I'm not there yet where Paul wants us to be. Are you like me? Are you where Paul's at? Where are we, where are you and I not letting synergy occur in our lives and in this church? Now let's go to scripture for a second. Now does anybody here remember why Paul is writing this letter from last week? Well, when I preached last week, but anybody remember why Paul is writing this letter? This is the interactive portion. <laughs> So he's writing it for, actually Dawn gave you a nice big clue when she came up here and read the scripture. <laughs> he's writing it for church unity. That there is a moment in this church, now Paul, we believe, did start the church in Corinth and then he left. And then out, outside of him not being there, lots of conflict, lots of things are going on. People are writing him, he's writing back to him. Paul is all about networks. It's amazing these letters went back and forth and he wrote as much as he did. But things were not going well in this place. And so he is writing about we need to be unified. 
So why would Paul, and now we're jumping to chapter 12 where we're in today, why would Paul, if he just talked about spiritual gifts, that's what we talked about last week, and we all have them from the Spirit, why would he talk about it again? Just think about that. Last week we talked about spiritual gifts, and today we just heard them again, but in a different format. Why do you think he would do that? Maybe church unity needs to be heard tons of times. Maybe he needs to justify and prove the power of Christ in people's lives. Or maybe he also knew his audience and what was going on. How often do you need to hear the same message before it sinks in? If you're like me, you need it about a thousand times. And what do you think is the purpose of the body analogy? You see, these verses that he's talking about, the hand, the foot, the eye, is about social inequity. It is about status. In verse 13, he talks about Jews and non-Jews or Gentiles. Slaves are free. Notice he's not talking about gender. Notice he's not talking about any other stuff. He's talking about status. He's talking about the inequity that is existing. He is talking about the argument between the Jews and the Jews that don't believe Jesus was the Messiah and the Jews that do. He's talking about disunity. Where do you have disunity in your life? Aesop wrote a bunch of fables um, long, long time ago. And there's this fable that says this. One day it occurred to the members of the body that they were all doing the work while the belly had all the food. So they held a meeting and they decided to strike till the belly consented to its proper share of the work. For a day or two, the hands refused to take the food. The mouth refused to receive it. And the teeth had no work to do. After a day or two, the members began to find that they themselves were in poor condition. The hands could hardly move. The mouth was parched and dry, while the legs were unable to support the rest. Thus, even the belly was doing necessary work for the body, and all must work together, or the body will go to pieces. Doesn't that sound like what was just read? So now if we fast forward, I think uh, Aesop was around 630 uh, B.C. If we jump ahead to 503 B.C., we have Agrippa, Minius Lat Latinus, probably incorrectly pronounced, it doesn't matter. He's dead. <laughs> Long time ago. However, what is important <laughs> is what he did, or what they think he did. So there's a fable about him dealing with soldiers at a time in which there was social injustice in the Roman army. And so it goes like this, that he told a fable about the parts of the human body and how each has its own purpose in the greater function of the body. The rest of the body through the stomach was getting a free ride, so the body decided to stop nourishing the stomach, he said. So the other parts became fatigued and unable to function, and so they realized the stomach did serve a purpose, and they were nothing without that belly. And so in this rendition, this person, Agrippa, was dealing with a part of the army that said, I'm not going to fight for you anymore. And he was saying that, the lieutenants who were giving the orders were needed. The stomach represents the class of people who rule, and the body represent the plebes or the common people. You see, he was able to reach an accord between those that ruled and the plebes, the common people, including how to move forward. You see, Paul knew that story. Now, why do you think I would repeat, repeat the story twice this morning? Is it because of impact? Is it because we don't remember things? You see, Paul actually does this often. If you read his letters, you will see him repeating things time and time again in the same letter, almost in chapter by chapter. In chapter 12, where we're at, he's essentially saying the same stuff we talked about last week. You see, Paul knew his audience, and he knew they would know this story. You see, this entire scripture is about social inequity. Most times we preach on this about we're all unique, we all have differences, let's all get together and sing We Are the World. That's great. Enjoy those sermons. Today we're talking about social inequity. You see, in this world of 2022, we still have 
in equity, in income, in genders of all types, in the isms that we experience. We may think we have overcome, but we are not much different than the Romans. We are not much different than the 60s when we still had civil unrest in terms of race conditions. We still have that today. No matter how much we think we have gained in 2022, we still have wealth gaps, leader gaps, government issues, just like Paul did. We have access to health care issues, retirement issues, school and education access, and the list goes on and on and on. These verses are about how do we live in a world in which equity is not present. And I am certain each of you has a story of how inequity in this world has affected you. Whether it's because you have received more or because you have received less. Each of us live in a world in which equity still exists. And Paul is saying, when we have the power of the Spirit, inequity doesn't need to exist. That's what verse 26 is all about. In verse 26 he says... If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. You see, Paul is telling us true unity is that when we all, when one suffers, we all suffer. And when one is honored, we all are honored. When we hear the prayer requests, do you suffer along those that have issues? Or do you just hear them and say, that's a shame. I'll put them in my prayers. You see, Paul is talking to a Gentile and a Jew. The person who believes Jesus is not the Christ and the person who believes Jesus is the Christ, he is saying the two of you should share all suffering and the two of you should share all the honor when there is honor. How often do you truly share in someone's success? Or do you just say, that's nice, and in the back of your mind you say to yourself, huh, how did they get that? When you hear somebody got a new car or bought a new house or is doing something different in their lives, how often in the back of your head do you wonder how come you can't have it? You see, Paul is talking to you and I in those places in which inequity, injustice shows up in this world. Verse 26 tells us the ideal of what it means to live in a community of Christ, in the community of the Holy Spirit, in the power of hope is here, in the power of synergy is here. Paul is telling us it can be accomplished. But I wonder how often we believe it can't be accomplished. We believe it's an ideal, and yet that's why we just talk about this verse as we're all different, we all should get along. You see, Paul is saying it's not about us getting along. It is about us understanding all of us are on equal ground. At one point in the scripture, he talks about these parts that we shouldn't show. Most likely are private parts he's talking about. And what he's saying in there is those are just as important as the parts that are seen. How often do we live in a world of shame? We shame our bodies, we shame each other, we shame in this world. How often are we unable to accomplish what Paul is saying? You see, synergy happens when we get close to what Paul is telling us we should do as living in the body of Christ. You see, when we respect everyone in all shapes and forms, when we listen more than when we speak, when we have an optimistic view with realism, we are living in the here and now and the future, not the past. We may use the past to learn from it, but even Paul is saying the past is the past. We can live together. When we believe, not just think it, when we believe that the God and the Holy Spirit's power is enough to lead to healing and transformation, where in your life have you experienced this and where have you not? Where have you experienced this transformative power in your illnesses, in your abuse, in your trauma, in your guilt, in your money, in your relationships? Where do you need God's synergy to do more than you could ever do alone? Where do we need this in this church? Again, this church is phenomenal. It's overcome a deficit. We have fun fall fest. Um, spring fall fest we have christmas light shows we have outreach and more is to come and yet we still need to figure out how are we going to live in this in in this equity way in a world in which inequity exists paul ends this with verse 31 talking about this greater gift 
Now, if you look at the Greek translation, it actually means zealous. And so theologians have debated, is it zealous because you are zealous for the gifts? Or is it zealous of how we want to follow God? Maybe the question is, why would we end this? Or why would Paul end with this sentence? Most likely it's setting us up for chapter 13, which is for next week. So where do you in your life need healing and freedom from social inequity to experience the true power of Christ, the power of transformation, the power of creation, the power of synergy? Paul has it right that when we live in Christ, there is no division, but yet you and I, we create that division all the time, big and small. Where do you need to live in Christ and feel the power of transformation, creation, and synergy? Where is that needed in your life? Amen. And now as we transition into our offertory, while the band members come on back up, as a response to what we know as synergy within Christ is the ability to give of our time, our presence, our witness, and our gifts. Where is God calling you to create equity in a world of inequity? We'll have the ushers come forward. Almighty God, we thank you for, for all that you do for us each day, whether we see it or not. We thank you for the love that you share with us. And please accept our tithes, our offerings, our services, our prayers that we give back to you. Because we are just giving back to you what you have already given to us. Please accept this and use this to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My hope for you is that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit this morning. And I hope that God's fire is raging in your heart. So join with us now. Shout, God, good God Almighty, and take him out to the rest of the world. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. They say your love goes on forever at your mercy now.
Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Well, good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise him to me no matter what Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Amen. And so as we go forth from this place, let us remember that our purpose is to know, grow in, and share the love of Christ with a vision of souls restored, nourished, and transformed, passionately serving Christ. And so leave this place with that purpose and vision, knowing we are called to unity with each other. May God's love surround you. God's spirit guide you. God's whisper cheer you. God's peace calm you. God's shield protect you. God's wisdom arm you. Wherever may God lead you. Amen. Have a great Sunday, everyone. God bless. Well, good God Almighty, why won't you find me? Raising your name no matter what God. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down.